I truly think the internet needs an incredible fish batter recipe that doesn't have alcohol. And it exists! Oh, it exists, as you can see right here, and here, and here. We're making the flaky batter fish, we're making the crispy English chips, and we're making the tartar sauce. If it wasn't clear enough already, we're making fish and chips, I think that's pretty obvious. Now let's go! For the tartar sauce, tartar sauce, starting with mayonnaise, make your own, buy it. Either way, it'll be fine. Some chopped dill pickle, some chopped onion or shallot. I only have onion today, so I'm doing that. Otherwise, I would be using shallot. Chopped dill, fresh dill, a little bit of chopped caper, not too much. A little bit of mustard. I'm a fan of this Savora mustard right here, but you could use Dijon or what have you. Just a little in. Now, lemon juice. And Sergeant Gilbert reporting for duty. That's just black pepper and just a little touch of salt. Now, we just give this a quick mix. And there's our beautiful sauce done. It is looking delicious. Delicious. Now for the chips, I'm gonna give you an extended and a short version because I can already see the comments flying around in my head about how long this takes. But it's a great method. So I'm just using the standard M16 of potatoes, the russet potato, and all I'm gonna do is peel them, cut them in half, and then cut those halves into four wedges. I'll then drop them into some cold water, which I'll dump out and replace with fresh water. Now at this point, they'll go into the fridge until the next day, and so it should make for a lighter, crispier potato with a really fluffy inside. Then all I'm gonna do is dry them off the best that I can. And for our first fry of these chips, we're gonna use peanut oil and we're gonna cook them at 275 degrees Fahrenheit for 11, 12 minutes. When they come out, they should be cooked, but still holding their shape. As you can see here, if I just push my thumb into one, it leaves an indent. Also keep in mind here, if you're just doing regular size fries, that first fry will only take four or five minutes and not 11 or 12. It's only because we're doing these large chips, it takes that much longer. At this point, I'll let them cool down to room temp and then throw them in the freezer for another day. I know what you're thinking. The short version is coming, don't worry. But you know what's cool about this version is if you want to par fry a whole bunch of potatoes Then you can just bag them up and keep them in your fridge and you just have them ready to go for that final fry anytime But of course I understand if you don't want to do all that right we all have busy lives I totally get it. So here's what I would do. Just rinse your potatoes, change out that water two or three times, dry them off really well, fry them once at 275 degrees, just like I did. Then just take them out, let them cool all the way down to room temp, which will take maybe 40 minutes or so. And then just crank up the heat to 375 on your fryer and cook them one final time for about four or five minutes. So if you wanna just get it done in one day, just do that. All right, my friends, let's make the batter for this fish. And this is not your usual batter. You'll see a very famous recipe floating around online from Heston Blumenthal which has a combination of beer and vodka to make the batter. And while that recipe is excellent and we will try it sometime, I wanted to bring a batter to the table that didn't have any alcohol in it because this is a batter I've been messing around with for a while. And let me tell you something, it is absolutely incredible. Just have some all purpose flour here. I'm gonna add cornstarch, baking powder, salt. Now just give your dry ingredients a good mix. Now here I just have some water. I'm just gonna add one egg and just any kind of neutral cooking oil will do. This is just avocado. You just use what you have. Now I'm just gonna whisk that egg in here and then just whisk your wet ingredients into the dry simple as this super easy to make and I don't even care if there's a couple little lumps in here it doesn't need to be totally smooth just make sure all that flour is worked in and there is our batter done now here I have your standard fish for fish and chips in America anyway and that is cod although I lived and cooked in England for many years and over there we would definitely be more prone to using something like haddock if you're watching from the UK chime in in the comments what your favorite fish is for fish and chips because here in America it seems we've basically boiled it down to cod, but there are so many other great white flaky fishes to use for fish and chips like haddock. I just can't get it here, otherwise I would have used it. I'm just gonna cut this into a nice size for fish and chips, something like this. I want it to kind of look like a piece of fish, right? All I'm gonna do now is salt these a little bit just to get that seasoning throughout and we'll just leave this salt on for about 15, 20 minutes. Make sure you do that on both sides and we'll just give them a little pat dry after they're done and then batter them up and fry them. I'll just dry these off now. You can see a lot of water came out of them. Do that on both sides. Then all we're gonna do is just roll in a little bit of all-purpose flour. We want a really light coating of that, so just tap off any excess like so. And they are ready for battering and frying now. Now, the trick here, we'll just grab the fish by the end and really just let it drip before adding to the fryer. Now, we'll lay our fish into the peanut oil, 350 degrees, and just gently release. Now, after about two and a half minutes, you can just flip it if need be. So just about five minutes total for the frying. And I'm just gonna hit it with a little bit of salt and let it rest for about five minutes. And you can just see how light and flaky and crazy this batter is, right? It looks incredible. Now I'm gonna bring the heat back up to 375 Fahrenheit and we're gonna drop our chips. Straight from frozen in here, small batches. We'll just fry for about four or five minutes here. And then I'll take my beautiful chips, put them in a bowl with a paper towel and just salt them a little bit, of course. 
And let's just take a moment here and admire this thing, right? I mean, can you just see how this, oh. Okay, here we go, my friends. We got the fish, we got the chips, a little bit of lemon and our tartare sauce. Time to dig in. And if you wanna go ultra traditional, you need some malt vinegar, right? I remember getting fish and chips in England when I was a kid, late 80s, early 90s, and it would come wrapped up in newspaper and that smell of malt vinegar would wash out. So I'm just gonna do a couple drops here over the chips and the fish. Now, now it smells right, now it smells right. And I think you saw in the beginning of the video, I mean, just look at this. this oh my gosh, it's just so flaky. Whew. <laughs> mm, oh my god. Let's take a second just to admire what this batter does. I don't know if you can see on camera. There you can see, right? It's just so light and airy and full of holes. Chip. <laughs> mm, I know it's a lot of work if you do it my way, but these chips are absolutely fantastic. Well, my friends, thank you for hanging out. You know the deal. Drop a like, leave a comment if you so wish, and turn on notifications if you want to be a psycho. We welcome psychos here. And until next time, my sweet friends, you know I love you in a minute.